In this video I will show how to use a pickaxe microcontroller to control one of these DF player MP3 players. They are normally used with an Arduino but I'm going to use a pickaxe 08M2. At first I'm going to write some bare bones code to see how, how few lines of code I can use to get to a file to play on it. First of all let's take a look at the DF player. Here's the pin out of it. The pins we're concerned with, the only ones we have to wire. VCC, we'll go to the VCC on our little pickaxe board. Ground, we'll go to the ground on our pickaxe board. The RX, we'll go to the pickaxe board pin C2 through a 1K resistor. I'll show a schematic here in a minute. And then you'll need to put a speaker between these two pins. The speakers I use are these little 28 ohm uh, speakers, 8 ohms, 28, 28 millimeter 8 ohm speakers. The first DF players I bought were in a 3 pack that included the speakers and not a single one of the speakers was any good. All, it came with 6 speakers and every one of them was bad. So beware, just order, I would order them separately. Here's the DF player on Amazon. Now if you want to buy the supposedly original version, you can go to the DF robot store or you can go to the DF robot site and order them from there. As you can see there's quite a bit of difference in price. Most of the ones you're going to get are going to be knockoffs. Supposedly there are some differences. Uh, for the things we're going to use them for, I don't think it really matters. First I'll, sh I'll show how it's uh, wired. I've drawn up a little schematic here. We just have VCC and ground wired to the pickaxe board and to, to pickaxe C2 pin through a 1K resistor and the speaker. That's it to start, to start with. Now we have to get our files onto the SD card and to do that you have to copy them in a specific way. Here's the layout I used. I, I'm, on my little SD card I have a folder called MP3 and then all the files are labeled 0001, 0002 and so on. You can see down here to 29 with a .mp3 uh, extension. The order you copy these files to the SD card is important. Copy the first one first, second one second and so on all the way down till you get to the end. If you just drag them and drop them over here in this folder from wherever you've produced them. I used Audacity to, to, Audacity to produce mine. They're going to be all jumbled up and the way this little DF player works it's going to play them according to the order they were put on this in this folder. The pickaxe board I'm using, this little guy right here, comes in a kit like this. It's an AXE021 I got mine from Robot Shop. It's a pretty fun kit to build. Pretty simple. I soldered this header on here so you can use jumpers to your breadboard. It's got the voltage, ground, C0, C1, C2, C3, and C4 from the pickaxe. So five pins. You can see I have a C2 this wire running through a 1K resistor to the receive pin on the DF player. Now we're going to put our program into the chip. Uh, if we go up here and hit ABC check we see we're using 24 of our 2K of memory. I'll move this uh, my software stuff's messing up. I'll move this to the middle so you can see the little programming message. I need to turn it on it's just got a do nothing program in there now running. So let's hit the program button. Hit to hit it again. Down here, downloading program. Downloading data. In a couple of seconds we should hear it say something. It said one, but I'm not sure how well you can hear it because uh, 
the microphone I'm using is a couple of feet away. I'm going to switch to another the microphone on the webcam to uh, play it again. I'll stop the power and play it one more time. One. I have to go back to my other microphone. I have to keep remembering to switch. Uh, the file in there, I just have, well, I actually have 10 files in there, counting from 1 to 10. That's all it amounts to. Now I will explain the programs. Sex frequency M8 tells me pickaxe to run at 8 megahertz instead of its 4 megahertz default. It can run, it can run all the way up to 32 megahertz. The reason we need 8 megahertz is because we have to reach 9600 baud. These serial commands are for a software serial port, so they're uh, time sensitive. But pickaxe has a hardware serial port, but we're not using that. The software serial port can be used on any pin, it can be made an output on the pickaxe. This next line, high C2, all it does is set the C2 line to its high state because that's the normal state it's going to be in when nothing is being transmitted. The pause 5000 line, just uh, normally it would pause for 5 seconds, 5000 milliseconds, but since we're running at M8 or 8 megahertz instead of 4 megahertz, it's only going to pause for 2.5 seconds. Now I'll explain this serial out C2 line. C2 is the transmit line. It's the line we're going to use to send data to the uh, DF player. T9600 underscore 8. 9600 is the baud rate. The 8 refers to the 8 megahertz clock cycle. T means true. There is another version of this command that starts with an N, which means if you use that, for, it's inverted. These are just, uh, the logic levels are inverted. T is the one we need for this. Now I will explain what's in these brackets. The first byte 7E. To explain it, we got to go over here to uh, this data sheet by Flyron. Every once you make this uh, chip that drives these little MP3 players, this seems to be their version of it. You can see it's the same layout as the DF player. Down here we're getting into a serial the protocol we need to look at. Our start byte is going to be 7E, so that's our first byte. The version, which is always going to be FF, is a, a second byte. 7E, FF. This number 6, just for now, just set it at 6. It's a length byte, but it's kind of confusing uh, how they, how they uh, figure it. Our next byte is a 12. And to know what that does, we got to go down here to the commands. So these are in hex. So 12 says we're going to play something back in a folder named MP3. We're going to play a file in the MP3 folder. So let's go back to and see and find out what our next uh, number is. Zero zero. And that's this feedback byte. We're never going to need feedback because we don't have an RX line hooked or the, we don't we're not going to receive anything from a chip. So let's just use zero zero, no feedback. Our next uh, our next two bytes, we've told it we're going to play back with this number twelve. We've told it we're going to play back a file in the MP3 folder. These next two bytes are going to tell it which file to play. This is the most significant byte and least significant byte of a 16-bit value. Since we're going to be playing files for this demonstration purposes that are numbered 1 through 10, our most significant byte is always going to be 0. And we'll put our least significant byte or the file number, basically the file number we want to play in this number right here. So we can go up, since the byte will hold 255, uh, we'll hold the number 0 to 255, we could have 255 files 
in this uh, mp3 pole folder and just use this method I'm using right here so we're play playing the first file or the file numbered one in the mp3 folder our last byte EF in the byte in byte it just tells it that uh, it's done basically well I hope that made some sense now so, so what if we want to play more than just one file well first of all let's play a different file let's play the number two file we can do that just by changing this number here I'm going to turn this back on program it the one was from a program that was running before now it's downloading the program over here guess I could have moved to that downloading data and in a couple seconds two 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 I'll go back to the other microphone so you can hear it better Cycle power. Two. Two. I'll switch back microphones. Okay, so you can see we can play any of the files we want. I have, a, I believe I have files on there that are numbered to 1 through 10. The numbers 1 through 10. Now, to actually do anything useful with this, we're going to have to get a little more complicated. So, let's come up here and make a variable. We're just going to make one variable, b2 equals, and this is going to be the file we want to play, 2. Well, let's make it 3 this time to play a different one. Now, Down here, instead of number two, we're going to put in B2. Let's see if that passes syntax check. It does. We're only using 28 of our 2K of memory, 28 bytes of our 2K of memory. Let's program that to turn it on first. Two. See that two is from a program what is running now. Move that so you can see it. Downloading program, downloading data. Three. It said three. We'll go back to the other microphone for a second. Cycle power. microphones so we 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 can set the file we want to play just by changing b2 now let's make it count from 1 to 10 I'm going to use a for loop for that so for we'll use the same variable up here b2 b2 equals 1 2 10 we can get rid of it right here And down here, we need another line. Next. So we're going to see if I pass the syntax check. Nope, didn't. Oh. It's a 0 and a O are not the same. For B2 equals 1 to 10, we're just going to run through this serial out command. 10 times but that won't work I'll show, well I could show you but it won't work there's a reason it won't work because this uh, to play that file it takes time so we need to do one more thing we need to pause for a while pause for uh, I don't know 3000 which will only be at one and a half seconds because we're running it 8 megahertz instead of 4. 
I hope this works. I haven't actually tried it. Three. No, it's programming. Just change microphones. Let's do that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's how we can play different files pretty easily. Now this is actually fairly functional here. Just send it a serial command and uh, wait for a while for the uh, file to play. Now that's not going to work if you have different link files you want to play. Well now I think we're going to get rid of this pause command after our serial out uh, command. To, to do that we're going to use, uh, we're going to read the busy pin and we'll have to run an extra wire to do that. So here's how we're going to our wiring change we're going to make. We're going to put a line from the upper right corner of the DF player to a pickaxe pin C1. Well now let's change our program. Uh, we're, we're going to get rid of this pause 3000 but we will still keep a pause in here. We'll knock it back down to 200 the reason for that is after we send this serial command, or after we send this command to the DF player, we need to give it a little time to, start to process and set its busy pin uh, to indicate that it's busy. If we read it too fast, it might just blow right through this next part. So pause 200. Now we're going to set in a loop. do while pin C1 equals zero okay let's see if that passes syntax check yes what we're doing, we're just going to set in this loop between here and here while this pin C1 equals zero. So we're waiting on it to go high. The pause is just a little, little more do nothing time. It'll probably work without that. And this should play our sound bites one right after the other. We'll try it. Let's just start running. seems to be doing what we want it to do. Now to make this more usable we're going to do one other thing. We're going to move this serial, all this stuff that actually sends the command into a sub subroutine. So let's go down here. First of all let's get rid of a stop command. We don't need it anymore. We'll put in a little comment. to On the pickaxe you can have a Comment start with either this uh, apostrophe or a semicolon. Let's call our subroutine uh, uh, send send command. That sounds good. And it's a label, so you have to put a colon after it. Let's go ahead and put a return in here. 
that's going to be returned from our subroutine. But with a sub what a subroutine does for user that don't know, you jump to it, it executes, and then it returns back to wherever you jump from it before. Now we're just going to cut this stuff out. Paste it in. Serial out features. Alright. Now in here, in the middle where our commands were before, we're just going to uh, put a go sub send command. Let's check that. Okay, that worked. Oh, we should have put a stop button right here or something to stop the program. What I'll usually do, I'll make a forever loop here. We're just going to jump back up to the top and do it all over again. We'll put a pause down in here. Pause for a second. Let's see what that does. Okay, that seems to be working. We need to do a couple other things to make this more useful though. Right now, uh, we're always executing this command here, number 12, to play the file in the MP3 folder. But we, we really want to be able to use this to uh, set the volume for one thing. So, let's go up here. Let's just change, well for now, let's just change this to B3. Variable B3 will be used for our command. So, to make this continue working, we're going to say B3 equals 12. That's hex 12. Anything with a dollar sign in front of it is a hex number in the pickaxe world. We'll check that. Let's program it just to make sure it still works. That seems to be working. Now, since we've got this little routine here, but we can send it whatever command is in B B3 and this B2 is like a think of it as an argument or what it's going to be what the command is going to act on like set volume at 15 or play file number one so let's go up here let's set our volume let's save it uh, B3 equals I think six is the set volume command and B2 is going to be our level. So let's set it at 20. Let's make it a hex. See, I believe, yeah, I believe that is uh, 30 is uh, 0 to 30 and it's an in decimal. Now we can use this go sub sin command just like we did down here. Let's check the syntax on that. And if it's going to come down here and uh, execute that command. Now this may cause a problem. We will see. 
I'm gonna this is what I'm gonna do now is called if you ever, ever have trouble programming the pickaxe chip it just won't accept the program you want to do this procedure right here with it turned off hit the program button it's gonna say searching for hardware on whatever and then turn the thing on I forget what that procedure is called That did work. We set our volume much lower. Set a little higher. I want to switch microphones. switch microphones back so now we're starting to get something really useful here we've got a command that we can send to what or a, a subroutine that we can send whatever command we want now we could do more to this we could make sure that it would accept any number between uh, 0 and 65,535 but I think we're going to leave it at that Trying to think if there's anything else I want to demonstrate. We could name a few of these things so it makes more sense. This is the syntax you have to use to read the pen. Even if you put it in a symbol, you can't just say C1. So let's go down here and change our transmit to or our C2 to TX. And this we can change to busy pin. We can change this high also to TX. Let's let's give these variables actual names that make sense. Now we have to change these here. Let's see if all that passes syntax. Yes. This just makes it a little easier to read. I could do some formatting too. Oh, we need to change this here to command. And we need to change this B2 in our loop to argument. Let's program that. Shouldn't be any problem. I think what I'm going to do now is just uh, I'm going to clean this up a little so it looks a little better, a little better formatting. I'll probably fast forward through that. Well, here's the final version of the program. I've cleaned it up. I've done some formatting. I did change. I put uh, the variable names down here in the serial out command. They still had the B3 and B2 in there. It worked because we're referencing the same B2 
same location in the RAM. I think I'm going to call it quits on this video. Uh, I believe I've shown what I wanted to, mainly that you could get this thing to work with just a few lines of code. Of course, if you want more something more usable, you have to get a little more involved. I will post this code right in the, the description of a video. I think that works. Uh, so let me know if this has been useful for anybody or not useful. Well, thanks for watching.